Do you like recruitable red units? I like recruitable red units. My name is Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman, and welcome back to the channel. Unicorn Overlord. Hello everyone, as always, if you enjoy what I do, my coverage of Unicorn Overlord, turn-based strategy RPGs, or the gaming sphere in general, a like and a subscription from this video would be very much appreciated. Thank you so much. So what is the topic of the day today? Well, as I was going back through some footage, cleaning up some files, and basically getting myself prepared for the launch of Unicorn Overlord in less than a month, I was re-watching the initial reveal trailer for Unicorn Overlord and noticed this screen here. We can see Hodrick the Armor Knight in red armor being what seems to be purified or freed of some sort of mind control by Elaine's Ring of the Unicorn. The ring that up to this point seemed to just be a royal inheritance MacGuffin that he quote unquote needs to rebuild his kingdom. And while I've noticed this before, it's like, okay, well that's going to be the power of the ring. Something clicked in my mind where I realized, no, this is, this is probably the reveal of a gameplay mechanic. You see, we know now that you'll be able to actually speak with units on the battlefield to turn them to your side. We've seen that with this green unit, Rolf the Archer here, who has very prominently been seen to be recruited a few times in different gameplay sections that we've seen in the pre-release material. And I figured if we can recruit green units this way, what's to say that in Fire Emblem tradition, we can't also recruit red units? those of you who don't know, in classic Fire Emblem, you used to be able to find named protagonist units on the battlefield with a portrait and everything that started off as enemies, and you had to go and speak to them with a certain character to recruit them to your side. Uh, the, typically, this would be your lord, your main character, or another important story character. Old Fire Emblem heads will be very familiar with Sheeta and the fact that she is re recruiting a large majority of the units in Marth's games, even though she's not the lord, but everyone just loves her, so she's the one who recruits them. Uh, or, of course, like a character with some sort of relation to the enemy unit in question. There's a variety of different ways that this used to go down. Uh, unfortunately, this is not something that we've seen since Awakening with the recruitment of Tharja and Gaius, which is a real shame. I mean, back then, you had to pay attention. You had to actually look around the battlefield and say, okay, who here looks like they could actually be a friend? There's actually an awkward zombie comic about this that I'm a particular fan of. If you haven't seen her work for Fire Emblem, I absolutely recommend that you check it out. Uh, but it's a little bit of a shame because it meant that not only you did you have to pay attention to what was going on on the battlefield and what characters were there, maybe who you would need to talk to them with, potentially pay attention to the story if they had some sort of lines before a mission so you could be clued into, oh, this person might want to talk to them or they might have some connection to this character that I want to bring on this mission to try and recruit them. And then you also had to work around enemy units that were around them so you could clear them out without accidentally killing the unit that you were trying to recruit before you could try to talk to them. And it was very satisfying. It was always cool to see a new unit on a battlefield and be like, oh, oh, this might be the, this might be someone we can get. Oh, this is cool. They're a Myrmidon or a Sorcerer or a Dark Mage or whatever. We don't have one of those or I need another one of those. Let's see if we can try to recruit them. And it was always a point of excitement because getting new units in Fire Emblem is a ton of fun. But in the recent era from Fates Forward, we haven't seen this. And yes, technically, there's a couple of cases that you might be able to argue like, in Echoes, you're able to recruit characters like Delthea, who starts as a brainwashed red unit. If you keep her alive in her mission and then you can speak with her afterwards because you, know, you kill the sorcerer that was mind controlling her. Or in things like Three Houses, you can recruit characters from other houses to join your side by befriending them and building supports with them and everything. But that's not the same because you're not working around these units to try and speak to them on the battlefield with somebody. And I think that that's what's going to be happening here in Unicorn Overlord. Let's think about it. Hodrick is a character that we've seen with Elaine in all the pre-release material very early on in the story from everything that we've been able to tell, except for this one scene where he, it's a story-based mechanic where he's clearly mind-controlled or in some other way being corrupted, and the Ring of the Unicorn purifies him, causing him to join our side. I somehow doubt that an important ability of the ring of the unicorn that is one of the central cruxes of the story is a one-off event for this one cutscene, right? I'm far more inclined to believe that this is something that we will be seeing in play in the future. Now, could that just be in story cutscenes as a justification to recruit certain characters like enemy necromancer Baltro or Alcina the Witch? Possibly. Possibly. Maybe that's a reason that we're able to get them late in the game because the ring purifies them or breaks their mind control or turns them good or whatever. But I do think it's also possible that this will be a mechanic by which Elaine can be running around on the battlefield, either on the world map or during actual battles, 
find enemy units that may or may not be recruitable and try to talk to them and see if they are. Maybe they have to be defeated in battle first. We can see here Hodrick is kneeling down like he was just defeated, so maybe you have to beat them up and then recruit them like it's some weird version of Pokemon or Pal World. Or maybe you will be able to go up and actually talk to them or have a battle with them, get their HP low, have a lane, talk to them. Who knows? Um, maybe it will just be in story. But I do think that there's a possibility here that we could be seeing the return of recruitable red units. Uh, and even here, we can see in this little cutscene, this little screenshot here, uh, that Baltro the Necromancer states that the ring's influence will die with the rebels if he and Alcina defeat them. So clearly, the powers of the ring are something that are being referenced in the story and are very important. As such, I would imagine that there will probably be some sort of gameplay mechanic that goes around that. And we've seen a trend in recent years where cool, still morally gray, if not outright evil characters in turn-based strategy RPGs are recruitable. Look at Ozma in Tactics Over Let Us Cling Together. She was made recruitable there when she never was in the original Tactics Over. Look at Evlora in Triangle Strategy, a character who is clearly like the evil enemy general who seems like she has a little bit of a good heart in her, but you just get the inkling like, she might be recruitable, she's awesome. And in most routes, she's not. Most times you just fight her, potentially kill her, but if you take the right path and you make the right choices, you can get her. This is something we've been seeing more and more recently, and I would not be surprised to see that Unicorn Overlord winds up calling back to this old Fire Emblem mechanic that the series itself has not referenced or used in a long time. So we're seeing that a lot in Unicorn Overlord. The return of things like green units on the battlefield that you can recruit, having just, you know, blue-haired anime protagonist riding a horse and wielding a sword and using a MacGuffin to reunite the world. Hello, Sigurd. <laughs> I mean, Elaine, right? Like, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of callbacks to Fire Emblem in Unicorn Overlord, and I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you're able to recruit units in Ogre Battle and March of the Black Queen and yada, 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 and it's not just a Fire Emblem thing, but, like, listen, again, Fire Emblem is the series in terms of strategy RPGs that have put the whole genre back on the map due to the success of things like Awakening, Fates, and Three Houses. So I would not be surprised to see Unicorn Overlord pulling a lot from the influence of Fire Emblem, even if mechanics like this do also exist in Ogre Battle, because they want people who are familiar with Fire Emblem to play Unicorn Overlord, even though it is clearly an Ogre Battle game, all right? Let's just Let's just get that out of the way right now. What does this mean for how many recruitable units there will be? I don't know. We know there are over 60 different named characters that we're going to be able to get throughout the course of the game. I would be really surprised if they were all just friendly people we happened to run up on, or at the very least, neutral green units who decided to work with us. It makes way more sense to me that at least a small portion of those will be enemies who have to go out of our way to try and get. You know, we've seen there's a brigand who, you know, not to judge a book by its cover or anything, but typically a more enemy-aligned class in strategy RPGs like this, but we've seen him fighting on our side. So maybe he is a character that early on in the game or during a side quest or something like that, you're actually able to speak to him with someone and say, hey, why don't you turn from your ways of banditry and join us, right? It's possible. It makes me think of Gonzalez from Fire Emblem Six, who you have to recruit. Like this, there's a precedent for these types of things that I think Unicorn Overlord is absolutely going for. What do you guys think, though? Have there been other red units that we've seen in the pre-release material that you think may be recruitable? Do you think that characters like Baltro and Alcina, who kind of seem like the early mini-boss, like, evil enemy squad, will actually be recruitable? Do you think there's no actual possibility that we're going to be able to recruit characters off the battlefield and it's just going to be story-based or in post-battle things if a character survives, yada, yada, yada? Let me know what you think, because I just happened to notice this as I was going back through old footage, and I thought it was a cool thing to bring up and present to you all, because I love this mechanic. I think it's a damn shame that Fire Emblem hasn't done it in a long time, and I do think it takes away a little bit from the overall experience of Fire Emblem, where just like, well, I know who the friendly units are, maybe there's a green unit or two, or an isolated blue unit that I have to protect, that's it, like, I can just focus on beating up the enemies, taking their stuff, and yeah, it streamlines things, but... It takes away, I think, from the overall story and feeling of the world when every character you get just joins up because, right? Sometimes you gotta put a little work in to make it feel more worth it, and some of the coolest units in the series, in terms of Fire Emblem, have come from those types of enemy units that are recruitable. So, uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Plenty more Unicorn Overlord stuff to come as we come up to the release. It's surprisingly close at this point. Uh, both in terms of content that I'm planning on doing, and then also I'm sure there's gonna be other pre-release material to cover. With that said, though, my name has been Tom, otherwise known as Titanium Legman. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good night. Stay safe and healthy out there. And remember, be good to each other.
Para.